welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica, if you haven't seen me before, and welcome and thank you for joining me. If you have been watching my videos, I just wanted to apologize for obviously you, you guys would know that I've been absent for the last few weeks. Some personal stuff sort of that I needed to work through over the last few weeks and now I'm trying to get back in. And it's actually quite odd <laughs> being in front of a camera again. It's so strange that you get so used to it and at the end of the day, like three weeks isn't really that long. Apparently it is. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm working through my prop box. So I use a old fish tank as a propagation box. I don't know how many liters or whatever it is, but it's quite a big one. As you can see, there's like a cabinet underneath and it's, yeah, it's not a small tank, but it's not a big one either. We do also have a really big fish tank, which is really cool. And that has fish in. <laughs> but this is, yeah, what I use just as my propagation box. And I actually really love having the fish tank rather than sort of the normal um, container prop boxes. I have quite a big container prop box. We don't have really any space in our house where you can kind of hide it or it's not seen. So this kind of feels a little bit more of like a thought out feature. So I basically need to go through and clean this out today. Um, I need to go through the plants. I need to sort out some of the plants in there. So what I thought I would do is I would kind of just show you how I clean it, how I keep my plants in there, and then also show you some of the plants that are in there. There are a few things that I would really love to do in order to make the whole setup a little bit prettier and a little bit more sort of um, functional. And that would be it. I really would like to have a white top made for it. And I'll have like the proper hooks and everything for the grow lights, as well as I'd like like a, a whole lift up lid on hinges that I can fold it up and lean it against the wall or whatever, rather than with this one, uh, you'll see I have to take the whole lid off or like slide it on the back, it just gets a little bit awkward. I'm going to take you guys over to the prop box now. Okay, so I think you are going to miss quite a bit of my face, but I do think that's fine. We do want to see the tank more than anything, but I'm going to be turning the light off first which is just on a switch at the back. Just so that you guys kind of don't have to stare at a pink light, because that's the one thing I do hate about that light. Works really well, but I do hate it. Um, so as you can see, I yeah, have to lift this guy up and sort of shove him back here. Oh, so nice and warm in here. I'd actually love to know what the humidity is in here. I haven't checked it in a while. So the room at the moment is 66 because I do have the humidifier on. I think I'm going to leave this in here for a few seconds. Oh, 73. It went up to 23, kind of. 73. But I do think it is more in there. Okay, so I'm first going to take everything out and maybe talk you through what I'm taking out a little bit. But as you can see, this is where you would sort of like feed your fish. And I did cover that up with insulation tape. And then this is quite a cool lot. I paid like not much for it on take a lot. So it's only 50 watts. But yeah, and I basically did a really bad job of taping it to the top. I had to connect up the wire myself because it didn't come on like a cable. I had to connect it up. And it's just plugged in the bottom. And I've also got a fan in the corner over there, which I turn on uh, probably every other day or so. But yeah, oh, excuse all that. That's basically what I have to do in order to clean all of this. So it gets a little bit um, tedious bit annoying. It's actually, uh, there's so much to do in here. Okay, so here's just like a whole bunch of props. That's a syngonium. Oh, not a syngonium. Kind of looks like one though, but no, it is a Andersonia, but the narrow form. And there's a few of those in here. We've got a load of Hoya Matilde and I think this, oh, it is growing. Look at that. I didn't think that would grow. I was actually going to throw it away now. But anyway, yeah, this is a, yeah, just the normal Florida. It was meant to be a ghost, but she ain't. Um, and then there's some other node cuttings in there, which I don't know what they are. I don't label things very often. See, we have this old guy in here. This just had a propagation for a melanocrasm that didn't come right. Oh, this guy's coming out really cool at the moment. So this is a YATI, um, Syngonium. Rayi, sorry, not Yeti. It was sold to me as the the Rayi. It really suffered after I gave it like a thrips treatment, but I went in properly and attempted to kill everything possible. And he's coming back quite nicely now. Um, I didn't think it was actually going to make it, but he's actually he used to be quite round, like what this bottom leaf of it here is. But his last few leaves have been coming out extremely narrow like that, with loads of silver. So. He's looking really, really cool, and I actually want to pot him up. I'm going to still leave him in the moss because he's actually really enjoying the moss life at the moment, so I don't want to change that. 
I'm going to leave them in the moss, but I'm going to give them a bit of a bigger container because the moss dries out really quickly in this airy, well, this container with the holes. So I do want to pot it up in another container that it's, the moss won't dry out so quickly. Um, then I've got like loads of turtles, which I'm not going to talk about all of them. I mean, if you see how many I have, it's actually ridiculous. So that's some turtles. They're doing so well in here. I've actually done really well with turtles. That's some turtles. This is my main like mother turtle that lives in moss, in full moss. Some more turtles. That was obviously growing into the container next to it because we've got some roots covered in soil. Uh, here's another big pot of turtles. These ones don't quite... These are all new. These were actually grown in like a terrarium, but it wasn't getting enough light. So these sort of started stretching. So I just cut all the babies sort of, well, I cut it all off and put it in here, but it seems to be actually struggling to show the actual turtle. So like the patterning on, on it. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Obviously it didn't have much light and it was stretching. So I think and I mean, these have taken off quickly. I didn't do these too long ago. I wanted to propagate some to sell. So I think they're going to probably be ready pretty soon. Um, and I made them small because I didn't think they'd grow so quick. But I think I might actually pot some of them up together rather. Not tonight. Definitely not tonight. But once I get everything out of here, I'm going to show you how terrible. Oh, you can actually see all the algae growth. It's terrible. Um, yeah, it's another one. So like I said loads of turtles in here they're absolutely absolutely loving it and then i've got a whole bunch of stuff in here as well i literally have uh, some hoya ovivata i've actually got two orchids growing in here so that's a small little orchid baby there that i'm just waiting for it to give me something like roots wise and this is also another orchid really cool so i'm not really I've always struggled with orchids, but I've, like in the last year, I've actually done really well with them. I've gotten uh, one of my orchids to reflower, and it gave me three spikes that were full of flowers and was doing amazingly, so I'm really chuffed. But yeah, there's quite a bit of opavart in here. There's also Matilda in here, and then there's also um, a few different scandapsuses in here. I think I've got, yeah, I think there's Argerius and there's the Exotica, so I think that, yeah, there is a few different, a few different ones in there. And then we've got the, this uh, little, I think it's called string of nickels or string of something. I can't remember. Um, I don't think it's in the pot that I bought it in. No. But this I actually bought, it was like one little strand ages ago. And um, when I got home to kind of like water it and stuff, I realized that they had literally just put the strand on top of the soil and sold it like that. And I was a little bit like, okay, well, that's slightly cheeky. She hasn't even rooted yet. So this took a long time to root and grow like this, but it's actually really starting to look cool. I thought it was going to die at one point. Really cool. Can't remember exactly what it is. I'm sure it was like a string of nickels or something like that. I haven't paid much attention to that. Oh, and then this is a beautiful Hoya Obervata cuttings that have rooted really well. And I'm waiting to see if they give me any growth points. They do obviously have nodes inside there, but it'll be interesting to get anything because these ones are really nice. I've got some good like sort of splash on them and it's a really nice green color. When I bought my Obervata, it was actually, I think it was grown outside. Oh, it was an ugly looking thing, but I just saw a really good deal. So obviously I was going to get it, but it was very light like this leaves. Um, where is it? So this is what my whole obovata looked like when i first bought it it was this very pale green it had a uh, very thick chunky vines whatever you call these things i'm not sure stems and it had aerial roots for days so i feel like it was growing on a tree outside and literally got pulled off and potted up and propagated and that sort of stuff but really mature plant and in my care it started giving me these really beautiful leaves so i do think this was just way too much light quite strange how the same plant can actually look so different so i'm not keen on it looking like this this though is absolutely incredibly beautiful and my main plant um, does look like this i've hacked it up a hell of a lot to you know get it to look the way i want it to oh wow okay so i did think that the humidity was higher in there it's now at 81 um i think it takes a long time for that reading to obviously that needs it to actually read. Then this is so exciting. Okay, so this is really cool. This is just my Syngonium elbow, but 
If you guys have watched my videos before, or if you follow us on Instagram, which is at Green Fever SA, I'll put it down over here. I poured boiling water over it basically when I was doing a flush because it lives in liquor. And by mistake, I poured boiling water over, which I know sounds really stupid, but our tap gets really hot, yeah, our geezer gets ridiculously hot. So if you just knock the tap and it uh, goes to the hot setting, it doesn't take very long for it to be boiling water. And anyway, completely destroyed this plant. It um, went down to a few nodes and leaves that were at the top, obviously all the roots and a lot of the nodes towards the bottom just cremated, got melted away. Now he's growing back. I'm really chuffed because I had a nice big plant of this and now obviously it went down to four or five nodes out of a whole plant. So it's quite nice to actually just see him coming back and I'm really chuffed and I'm probably gonna leave him in here until he really starts giving loads of nice big leaves. Wouldn't mind actually getting him on a moss pole. Uh, so maybe we'll do that. See if I can get him to size up a bit. And this is uh, some more Andersonii narrow form cuttings. I don't know why, I'm not the biggest fan of this plant and I have so much of it, it's ridiculous. I think it's, um, when it looks really narrow like this and it actually does get the holes, it's actually incredibly beautiful. Uh, but it doesn't like to give holes too often. This is all very immature. Um, I actually have one that's actually looking really beautiful and it's giving quite a few leaves like this one with holes and that one's beautiful. But oh yeah, and the gnat problem in this is a problem. Like I need to get the gnat sorted. So I don't do soil ever for my own plants there's a few things in soil for certain reasons and most of them are hoyas just because i don't want to repot them things that i would like have the idea of selling i do do in soil because most people obviously want soil but this prop box then has a gnat problem i don't know if yeah i don't think you'll be able to see but there's literally dead gnats like sitting all over the glass so that's not fun <laughs> generally yeah the gnats aren't anywhere else they really do accumulate inside this because i think the temperatures are fantabulous for it Okay, so then this is very sad, but um, this is just a pot of moss with um, a bunch of um, Monstera Peru. And if anybody knows Monstera Perus or have tried to propagate Monstera Perus, they take an extremely long time. They are not quick. So I see there's a few dead sticks in here, so they don't look happy. And then this is orchid. I was trying to see if I couldn't get more babies to shoot off, but these are actually not doing well. I might throw them away. I don't know how true this is, but I've just heard with orchids, once the leaves start to die, um, it sends like a chemical down the stem, which kind of kills it all off. Um, whereas if you actually cut this off before the flowers start to die, you, it'll grow new stuff. But then I don't know, because often people just leave this on their plant and it grows. So I don't know. But anyway, I'll maybe leave them in here. They do look, this one looks like it's growing a bit of mold on the top because I actually haven't put the fan on in here for a few days because I've been lazy. But it's really quick. I literally have to switch about it, so I don't know why I haven't. And then this is so cool. So this I got in a trade, in a plant swap. And this was a little bit extra from, if you guys are in South Africa, you'll definitely know, I think on Instagram, his name is... Plant King? I think it's the Plant King. But anyway, really nice guy. Um, and he has his own plant shop and he sells some beautiful plants um, and some some awesome stuff like soil, soil mixes and what have you. But this was a little gift he gave me with the plant swap. And all oh, these nuts are driving me nuts. It's a little silver dragon. I did have one. I did kill it. And I was very depressed about it and very sad about it. So I really hope that I could do this one justice because he's really cute. And he's actually, um, you know, sort of these baby plugs, when you get them, they always look a little bit distorted. Um, I think they normally grow in a whole bunch of them and, and it just some of them just look a bit wonky. So he was quite wonky, but he's straightened himself up really beautifully. And he is starting to give a cool leaf over there. So I'm very excited about that. So that's definitely one of my favorite things in here. And then this was what I actually traded for. Oh, knocking things. And this is a Plowmania. Oh, no, it's not. It's a Mamiae. So it's a Philodendron Mamiae. This is the first one I've owned. This was a little cutting. I think this was the mother plant, he said, and um, that he cut all the way back. So it should have a really nice root system. This is in his soil, his pot. I haven't touched it. I've only probably had it for two weeks, um, maybe three weeks. but. It opened this leaf with me and it's nice and little, but he's really cute. 
Um, that is such a beautiful leaf. So I'm very excited to see how this goes. And um, he probably doesn't need to be in here, but I kind of just feel like babying him and getting him to grow as much as possible. And I don't really want to take it out the soil just yet anyway. And I already have bats in here, so we might as well just go with it. Okay. This is a beautiful variegated monstera cutting from my extremely beautiful mother plant that is giving me the most beautiful leaves at the moment, very chuffed. And it's actually just started pushing this long aerial root. This is very, very new. As you can see, it's just sort of come to here. But this is just growing in Lekka. It's giving me two beautiful, cute little leaves. I do want to sell this one. There's a few things I need for my plant collection. And I would like to get some new grow lights and that sort of stuff. So I feel like it's only fitting to sell a plant to support the hobby. It's doing very well. It's got roots for days. Um, I kind of just want to get these leaves to size up a bit. So obviously this was um, the new growth that I pushed out. This was the leaf from the original and I kind of feel like I'll probably sell it when it gives a nice leaf sort of this size. I mean it's got beautiful variegation. It's extremely beautiful and I do think it is going to pop a leaf soon. She looks a little prego, this leaf over here. So excited on that one. Oh, um, Okay, and then this is very sad and I'm embarrassed about it, but I basically did a video on this where this plant needed help. And um, this is my <laughs> Scandapsis exotica. And then I proceeded to have, um, com I, I completely ne neglected this plant even more so than, as you can see these are just falling off, more so than ever before. Their um, new roots are growing, but I do want to just have a look at what's going here and cut off some dead things and I don't know, maybe make it look a bit prettier because shame these leaves are definitely, some of them are donezos, but yeah, he'll come back. I'm not too stressed about him, um, but I'm, yeah, I'm embarrassed that I literally did a video on sorting him out and then left him alone and forgot about it. But what you can see at the bottom over here, I actually have takeout lid containers um, and I actually do that to kind of separate the plants that I am... That I don't want to be in water from the plants that I would like to be in water. The way that I do it is I actually put normal rainwater at the bottom or nutrient water at the bottom so that my plants that are in lacquer with drainage holes could actually just sit straight in here and I don't have to worry about cover pots and that sort of stuff. But then obviously the plants in soil are then put on this so that they're not being bottom watered the whole time. And the system works really well, except obviously I do have to clean it out every now and then um, because it likes to build up algae at the bottom, which there's a grow light, there's warmth, there's humidity, there's water, um, there's soil, there's nutrients, there's everything it needs in order to create a perfectly happy growing life. I mean, I can't expect to grow plants in here and uh, not grow the algae. So the first thing is to clean all that. These... I really don't feel like cleaning, I'm not going to lie, uh, not tonight anyway, because I'd rather just hose these off with a hose pipe. So I'm probably going to clean this tank out, but then I'm probably not going to put, well, and sort out some of the plants, but I'm probably not going to put water in the bottom of it tonight. I might do that in the morning. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this all up for you guys, soon as I've spoken for like 20 minutes about the plants in here. Um, and then yeah, I'm gonna give this all a good clean and I'll kind of show you what I'm doing a little bit, but it's all gonna be in fierce mode. What I'm going to do is basically I'm going to put the plants back in that I know I definitely want back in here. Only problem is I haven't washed the bottom bits, which is fine because I'll just come and put those back in in the morning. So the ones that I know I'm not changing anything on is this. Other than I'm going to give this a flush tomorrow, I'll rinse all the roots out and just give this a nice rinse. Um, but I want him to have a prime spot. So the light is sort of in the middle. I'm going to put him really in the middle. This guy I'm also not going to do anything with. And um, yeah, he's quite happy. And I'll pop him in. 
a few things that I don't need to do anything with but then there's also a few things that I want to give hydrogen peroxide water so what I'm going to do is in future I'm probably going to start watering um, only bottom watering in this just because it's more than easy enough to do that so I'm also going to be putting him back in and then I'm actually everything in soil is going to get hydrogen peroxide water at the end but I'll do it once everything's in I think there's no plants at the moment that are actually using the bottom reservoir. I think I want him to have a good spot too at the back. So what I like to I like to do, in theory, is put the biggest stuff at the back and the smaller stuff at the middle, but that doesn't always happen. So like I said, I'm going to put the things in that I know I'm not doing anything with other than potentially just water in first. This guy I'll put off to the side because he doesn't need like loads of light and I'm not digging his vibes too much and this guy I'll pop him over there I'm actually wondering if I'm going to make the bottom because maybe I shouldn't have the water at the bottom and I'll just have a jar of water in it this time to act as like the humidifier I wonder if I should do that hmm. change, I do this all the time I change my mind as I go and I have the most beautiful kitty here with me. Hi, he. Look how cool this one is looking. He's actually doing so well. But um, I do want to do something with him. I just don't know if it's going to be now. I want to do something where he can hang quite nicely. See, he literally just lives in moss, but he absolutely loves it, as you can see. I do want to just kind of wrap him up because if I do put water in the reservoir at the bottom I don't want the little oh, you have to be so careful with these because when they do get tangled they break off so quickly and then it doesn't look like a, when you've got just like a string and no turtles <laughs> yeah the leaves really don't like sitting in water obviously I mean what leaves do okay so what I'm doing for now is I'm just wrapping it back up until I can have um, an idea of what I want to do with this but I think I do want to pot it up in something where he can hang on the side of the... So I did have him hanging from a hook, but like I said, with the moss inside here with the fan, see this is what happens when he sort of the end sits in the water. So that's why I'm stringing him all up. But I kind of want him to sort of hang from the side so he can, like if I touch him here and he can like hang, but obviously just like on the side. Um, but until I find a way to... I'll probably actually just maybe drill a hole. That's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill a hole in this because it's just, just plastic. And I have the same hook that I was using for the pot. And I can just hang the pot because then the moss won't dry out too quickly. And I think he would look really cool sort of hanging over there. And then I can do that with a few. That's a good idea. It'll give me a little bit more space in here. So that'll be quite nice. Come have a look, Lou. The cat wants to look. What's going on, Sheens? Sheens? Say hi. Come have a look. I think he's just going to stare at the door. Sorry, we had to take a cat break. <laughs> They're so cute, you can't knock it. So we'll put him sort of in the front for now because he's actually really beautiful and I'd like to be able to see him. That's the whole point. And I think everything else needs a bit of effort um, to put in. So then I'm going to pop that guy. String of nickels. Over there. Just here. There's so many turtles. Maybe I should just put them all next to each other. And then they can create a wall of turtles. Maybe that's what I should do. And they're even getting the prime spotcher. Sheesh. Wondering if I should maybe just put two on that side and two on this side. Two there. And then two there. Whatever. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Oh, more turtles. I think I'm going to pop him maybe towards the back. Although I did say all the small things at the front, hey? Okay, well, let's put small things at the front for now. Let's stick to my word. Oh, it's these prop box things that are giving me anxiety. I don't want to deal with them. I'm going to pot him in moss. I do want to keep this in moss because he's living his best life in moss and I just find he's really happy in the moss since I've put him in it but I'm going to put him in this beautiful blueberry container 
and then I can still keep an eye on the roots but also know that um, the roots are protected, well the moss is protected from drying out. I mean I could just do that but I would rather just give it some more moss. Okay, so I don't know how this is going to go passing up while standing up but anyway, this is just rainwater that I collect into a bucket, well into a water container. Um, and I'm just going to soak a bit of sphagnum moss. I don't have loads left, but I have enough for the little job that I need to do. I'm actually going to do two, I think. Kind of just squeeze off some of the water. Oh, I have no counter space. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to be putting a little bit in here. Um, and I do want to keep it. I don't like to um, condense it too much. So here we've got a nice little pot of sphagnum and we're going to put this guy in here and hopefully he can, he can grow really nicely. But yeah, so he's going to have loads of room to grow in here and I can still see what he's doing. Um, so yeah, he'll um, get a little bit sturdier in here obviously as the roots all cling on but for now, that is good. Pop him over here. So I've got this other one and this one had raspberries in. And um, this container, I am actually going to upgrade my silver dragon. And then he can just also, I'm probably going to let this live. I'm actually just a bit too worried about this airy pot, um, about him drying out as well, because that is actually how I did kill my other one. So, but he has actually grown some beautiful roots since I got him. Oh, wow. I don't really, I'm not going to move anything because I'm just going to let him keep being happy. But all of that's new roots. So, really chuffed with that. I've only had him for about two weeks. So, doing really well. Well, considering for me, not exactly. Alocasias, honestly, are one of my favorite genuses. I love the look of them. Um, most alloc, like, most plants that I see that I absolutely love or I'm drawn to are alocasias, but oh, um, I grow, yeah, they are, they just don't like my um, forgetfulness. But that's, yeah, that's how I killed the last one is all the moss dried out and um, then when I watered it, it just didn't take it, um, it just struggled. So I'm going to be putting them in this so that that doesn't happen again. Um, I should have probably just done that to begin with, but I didn't think about it. Okay, so he looks really cute. I'm very excited for him to grow nice and big, and hopefully he likes it in here. Um, I don't think I've disturbed him too much. And I'm going to give him a nice a front row seat. All these little turtles have to go back. So I'm going to pop them just right here in the front. Um, this guy's doing really well. He's uh, growing for days. And... We can probably put you there as well. I am just going to leave it because I don't think me repotting this is going to do anything other than make it look slightly prettier. Um, but as you can see, we are getting sort of some new nodes coming up, some new growth points pushing. Um, and there is a few of them. I say that as I can't find any more. Oh, there. Um, so you can see sort of there's another one coming up. So I'm kind of just going to leave this to sit got some really nice roots growing his leaves are on the strugs but he'll come right and once some new leaves start pushing out I will then pot him up all at once but I don't think there's a point in really messing with him too much okay so I think I'm gonna leave a chair for tonight and um, there is a big gap in the middle here but that is because I still have this that I need to go through and this that I need to go through I need to figure out what's what and split them up along with this and then this I need to go through there's quite a bit I have to do here and I kind of want to think I want to sit down and go through that and do that properly I'm gonna do that all tomorrow it's the next day and basically all I'm gonna to do today is I'm going to give it a water but with hydrogen peroxide and um, there are still loads of fungus gnats inside like you can literally oh see one like right there obviously just cleaning the tank's not gonna get rid of that I do actually want to try and not have the water reservoir at the bottom because I do think it'll keep it a little bit cleaner and potentially maybe get rid of a few more gnats. So I'm just going to go through these three things. This guy, this guy, this guy and I'm
I'm just going to separate them out and put them together now. Okay, so it is actually a whole week later and I just wanted to test not having the water in this bottom sort of water reservoir uh, while in the bottom of the tank and I've had no water in here at all other than in like the Lekka reservoirs and obviously just from watering the plants and as you can see it's on 81% humidity and that's without the light being on today so really chuffed. In future I'm not going to be putting the water in the bottom unless I really feel like I need to. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any comments please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts or what you guys are doing with your prop box. I really love having this fish tank. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!